Hello and welcome to my iPad. Right, you notice this thing here. Yes, it's not 2015. Do not adjust your set. I've had to download this because having bought an iPhone 13 mini a few days ago and taken a few clips, uh, I'd like to edit the uh, cinematic footage. And uh, that's only possible on mobile at this moment in time through iMovie. Uh, so yeah, we're all going to have to download it again, I'm afraid. Uh, the bad news is, is that it's still terrible um, as an app overall compared to everything else that's come out over the last five years. But as you notice down here, we have cinematic. Yes, so essentially that means we can edit the focus points. Right, there's only four or five clips here. It's a very short piece um, and I was running and gunning. So, you know, composition framing, etc lighting didn't really take masses into consideration so yeah let's get to it so this first clip you'll notice if i click on the clip i've set the focus point here represented by this key frame over here and uh, this uh, slider over here essentially allows you to adjust the depth using the depth map data um, and this is about as uh, shallow as we can get it. So let's play it. And at this point here, obviously, I will be focusing on this chap. So let's see how that works without the recticles. I think that they, they would be, I think that they ought to be up to date. Um, I, I don't think they'd see it as a, as a threat. I thought that was really good. Really, really, really good. Yeah, everything seems pretty sharp. Yes, there's a little bit of fringing. You can see on the glasses. A um, little bit around the seat itself, uh, but um, yeah, the the bokeh's good. The bokeh's lovely, and then this the, the actual rack is smooth. The rack is smooth, and he's pretty sharp as well. So so far so good. Right, onto this clip here. Now you'll notice that yeah, again sharpness around the hair, not so good. A little bit not so sharp around the edge here as well. Um, and if we adjust the slider, we can increase uh, uh, increase the sharpness uh, around the image, uh, get rid of some of that shallow depth of field. If we go all the way across, obviously it's very sharp. If you keep your eye on the on the strands of hair, and if we take it all the way down, yeah, just gets a bit fuzzy. So I think the sweet spot for me is around here because I, I'm going to rack from him. To him, so let's see. And the technology support, rather than getting in front of a buyer or getting in front of a big company to sell through to you, we want you. Okay, that again worked really well. Um, although it wasn't, you know, because you know I had adjusted this, um, it wasn't like a, a significant contrast in terms of uh, between the two, so it wasn't as obvious. So let's take this down. Let's take this down. Let's take it all the way. Yeah, and see what it looks like now. Getting in front of a buyer or getting Okay, so that's a bit more obvious, isn't it? That's good. Okay, um, on to the next one. Right, this is where things get mm, a little bit, um, not confusing, but there's a couple of things I can work out. So you notice here that I have set the focus, focal point to this chap, but he's not in focus. Actually, nobody is in focus, although the depth map is picking, or the... The data is there to say that that's a face, that's a face, and that's a face. But he's not in focus. And as hard as I try, I cannot get him in focus. But you'll notice as I play it, it might be that that's... he is in focus now, but there is no keyframe. So I've been playing around with it. I just can't get it to focus at this point, which would lead me to believe that for whatever reason, the data, the depth map data, isn't available until this point that's the only thing that i can that i can think of um uh so yeah so that's that that's something that uh, i would rather wasn't the case but it is and let's just go on to this clip over here right and let's take this all the way down so we have maximum shallow depth of field what does a subscription right again focus over here see the nose the hands right very blurred so let's sharpen that up let's 
Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Model applied. How much? So you notice there, sharp, but then a bit blurry. How much resources do you need to service it? But for my purposes, this is fine. This is usable footage. It doesn't need to be pin sharp. And again, we've got a nice shallow depth and we're going to rack to the guys at the back. How much support do you need? guy on the left. Where are you going to there launch? We go. and where are you going right. to focus? You might have noticed something there. Again, this is the point at which I want him to be in focus, but he isn't. He isn't in focus. He's, it's, he's still a bit fuzzy. But if, if I move it across here, there. See that little jump? There. So basically it's it's focus hunting, but there is no keyframe to suggest that that's what should happen. Again, I can't get rid of this. Where are you going to launch and where are you going to focus? So that would render this largely unusable, that particular clip. And then we're onto the final clip over here. Again, focus is on this jump. Now this is probably a shot you can take on a regular phone because he is so close to the camera. But uh, yeah, let's play it anyway. That's a, that's a big ass. Okay, that worked quite well. So, again, without the recticles, that's a big ass. from him that's to that's him. That's a, that, you know, they're going to really interrogate that. Perhaps a little bit too aggressive on the racking, but maybe that's to do with the fact that um, we're going from him to him, and you know, the, you can't adjust the length of time the racking takes. It just takes what it takes. Is what Apple thinks is a natural. Uh, racking speed if you like um, and I guess the way you can adjust that might be to maybe reduce uh, well you can't you can't you can't you can't reduce uh, uh, the the shallow depth of field to the point so I mean if, we, if we're here yeah so that's about as deep as this particular clip gets so that's a big ask, if we could make it even deeper then the disparity between him out of focus and in focus would be less and therefore the racking might look a bit smoother. Anyway, I'm getting into the weeds here. So overall impressions. I absolutely love the iPhone mini um, in terms of its size and clearly the camera is incredible. Uh, this is not the greatest lighting environment. We've got um, kind of fluorescent light, so I was expecting some flickering here. Don't really know why there isn't. Um, colors are good, um, even though they're, you know, it's 1080p um, and it's kind of all of that's baked in. Uh, is this feature enough to warrant upgrading? I mean, I'm on a 12 Pro Max. I'll be giving the 13 Mini back and going for the 13 Pro, not the 13 Pro Max. Um, you know, the, the size of it has been unwieldy and actually has been too much for my OM4 gimbal, including an, a moment lens. So yeah, 13 Pro um, with a moment lens should work well on that gimbal. Um, and obviously it has the macro mode, um, you know, it has, a, and the telly as well, which isn't good in low light, but that's why I have a moment lens telly, which goes over the wide, etc. cetera. Uh, so yes, I think upgrading is a good idea. This is pretty phenomenal, what we're looking at here as a first iteration.